For the roundtable this week, over the past few years, keeping backyard chickens has become more and more popular here in the Adirondacks in Vermont. It's not just farms and rural homesteads anymore, but people are now raising chickens in more suburban and even urban backyards, which our guest today knows all about. Matt Wolpe is not only an author and a furniture designer and a woodworker, you are a growing number of city dwellers in Oakland, California, raising chickens in your backyard. Yeah, Welcome. it's true. Thank nice, you. Nice to have you here. We should mention uh, you grew up in, in Colorado, but you do know Vermont. You went to uh, uh, a school in Vermont. You did an apprenticeship there a few years ago, uh, carpentry and, and woodworking. So you know the region. So it's nice to have you back here uh, visiting us. Thank you. So uh, how many chickens do you have in your backyard? I have four chickens in my backyard, which is actually the legal limit in Oakland where I live. That's the limit. So yeah. Oakland, like many other major cities, you can have backyard yeah. chickens. Yeah, absolutely. I know for many folks, it's it's the local boar movement. Mm -hmm. I want to know where my food is coming from, and that's why they raise the eggs and, and chickens for meat. Is that the same for you, or, or why did you decide to, to raise chickens? <laughs> yeah, I mean, partially it's, it's knowing where my food comes from, um, but it's also the pleasure and fun of building a chicken coop. I, I think I got into it from the building side, um, and then enjoy keeping chickens and raising them and obviously eating the eggs. Um, so it's kind of all those things. I love it. I love it all. So to get to the book, you designed your own chicken coop. You said we've got to have some way to, to keep these chickens. Uh, and being a builder and a carpenter, you uh, came up with a design and you built uh, your first chicken coop. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, Kevin, Kevin the co-author, and I, um, never thought we would write a book about chicken coops. Um, you know, like you said, we started out as designers and built coops for ourselves and for a couple organizations in Oakland and then decided we wanted to try again and really refine the design and, and make a really beautiful coop. Um, so we did it. <laughs> so we kept going. <laughs> and that was the first one you came up with uh, called Chicken in a Box, if I'm correct? Yeah, that's correct. And yeah. explain what uh, what went into that and how you designed that? Um, so the chicken in a box we uh, wanted to make as a prototype or kind of a product idea. Um, so we wanted uh, something modern um, and clean and, and just has a lot of integrity. So the, the framing all comes apart easily. Um, everything's pretty visible. It has a butterfly roof, so it's inverted um, and it collects the water. Uh, and funnels it down for the chickens. So. Oh, it does. So yeah, yeah. Multi-purpose. Multi-purpose, yeah. Well, I know for many folks, the concern over having chickens in urban areas and suburban, suburban areas is the noise and the smell. So probably one question that constantly arises is how can folks keep their chickens in, in an environment that's safe and sanitary, but at the same time, it's, it's pleasing enough that it's not going to annoy the neighbors. And so probably a lot of that is what went into you are coming up with this book and, and these 14 different uh, types of chicken coops. Yeah, absolutely. We wanted to, as, as the role of the chicken is changing and becoming more and more urbanized, we wanted to reframe um, the image of the chicken in the chicken coop as something that's not, you know, a, a scrappy backyard, like eyesore or, or um, blighted uh, structure and, and wanted to make something beautiful that's an accessory and that celebrates the the um, self-sufficiency and, and local food movement that it represents. So yeah. no tar paper and plywood. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Kind no. of designer <laughs> coops. Um, and and uh, I'm stealing a line from your publicist here. Uh, it, it elevates coops from purely functional to uh, outright fabulous is, <laughs> is uh, how they describe it. Yeah, we wanted to have our book be, you know, a practical how-to guide uh, but also an inspirational book that just gave people ideas that they wouldn't necessarily think about otherwise or, or got their mind thinking about, um, you know, oh, the possibilities that, that they didn't c consider before. So, so it's, it's kind of all those things, and, and some of the coops are a little over the top, uh, but, but it's fun, you know, we, yeah. So it's a do-it-yourself guide. You have instructions, you have photos, uh, so it's e easy steps on how they can do it. Exactly. Right so at home. There's 14 coops in the book, and there's step-by-step -step building instructions with um, drawings and photos 
Um, so anybody um, there's can can build one, and they're they're very they vary from beginner to in intermediate to advanced. Well, give us a few examples of what are some of the uh, the <coughs> coops that you have in the book, and and what makes them special. Um, let's see. So one of the coops, which is more of a be beginner, is called the stoop coop. Um, that is literally a set of stairs. Um, so similar to a, a front stoop, we decided to make a backyard stoop and um, make a coop underneath it. So you can actually, rather than you know pushing the chickens to the side, you actually sit on the coop and interact with it, and it's a place for gathering. Um, another coop is called the Coopsicle, which is uh, actually at my house, um, and that's more of a treehouse coop, and with the idea being that chickens, if they were left to their own devices in nature, would sleep in the trees, and so we wanted to kind of bring them back to the trees and have, have a coop that sort of rose up from the ground and, and had a little bit of, uh, had a view for the chickens. and felt a little magical. That's yeah. interesting, and that's what you have in your backyard. Yeah. So your chickens have a view of, a, of the bay? and uh, they Yeah, Francisco. they do, they do actually, yeah. yeah. And um, price-wise, uh, all different levels here, uh, some of them are, are, are simpler and prob probably more affordable than, than some of your more luxurious ones. Yeah, absolutely, so we wanted to have um, a bunch that were affordable. Um, so we use mostly common building materials. Some of them are materials that you can easily source from a salvage yard or, or just find you know, on the side of the road. So for instance, we, one of the coops is built with pallets, uh, shipping pallets, and then another one is built with um, just two by fours, which are kind of the most common building materials. So, um, so yeah, that, that was our hope was that the materials were accessible um, and affordable. Um, there's a couple that are more on the high-end side for people that want to really go for it, but um, I think there's something for everybody. And you talk about using pallets. Now, this goes back to as you were becoming a designer and learning to become a designer and builder, you, in New York City, mm -hmm. you built homes using shipping crates, and then you went to, uh, mm -hmm. after Hurricane Katrina, you helped build homes down there, and, and the same sort of thing, you, you built very practical homes using uh, uh, not exactly conventional materials. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, um, that's also becoming a, a trend, more of a trend in the design and construction field. But, um, but I find it a, a, a fun challenge to take a material that would otherwise go to the landfill um, and try to make it look really polished and, and beautiful, um, but also celebrate it, not hide it, and, and have it be a feature. Um, so, so yeah. And you mentioned catching the drinking water for the chickens. A number of your coops have very practical uses. Uh, some have a garden on the roof. Uh, others uh, have multi-use. So uh, uh, I imagine that's by by design that uh, that these are very very practical for small backyards. Exactly. So we wanted something that would fit into. Uh, an urban uh, lot or an urban yard and work really well with other things that they're using that land for and not kind of dominate the space. So, so in some cases, it, it, you know, the, the roosting area where the chickens uh, sleep you know, funnel is directly over a compost bin, so it just funnels into the compost. Um, like you said, there's a raised bed, uh, water catchment, and yeah, we try to have it m multifunctional and kind of, yeah. What's been the reaction to your book? Are you getting? Are you hearing from people across the country who are are using your designs and successfully building their own coops? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a lot of uh, encouraging. We've gotten a lot of encouraging feedback. We like it most when people kind of take a an idea or or a concept from the book and then run with it and do their own thing. So um, it's fun to see photos of people that have done something like that. Um, and we've you know done some some slideshows and just showing people coops and always surprised about the, the different kinds of people that come out to see us and, and the enthusiasm for chickens. People love chickens. And this is really <laughs> catching on across the country. Yeah, it is, yeah. And you mentioned doing it yourself, doing your own thing. Yeah. You live in, in an interesting house. You built your own house in the backyard of, of a friend's house in Oakland. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's pretty small. <laughs> it I is, guess. One, tiny even. <laughs> And yeah. that's by design, obviously. It is, yes. Um, while we were editing the book, um, Kevin and I are first-time authors, so we didn't really know what we were getting into with the, the, the whole process. So we were editing, spending a lot of time on the computer, 
and I had been reading about the tiny house movement, um, which is are these small uh, mobile houses built on a trailer um, that people were starting to experiment with as a form of, of alternative housing. And so I decided to, to do my own and uh, designed and built a tiny house and have been living in it for almost two years. Yeah. Was that inspired by what you saw after Katrina? Did you build a number of small portable units there to try to get people into a home as quickly as you could? Yeah, I mean, that was, that was what our mission was, definitely building you know, quickly and well and, and something that was adaptable. Um, the, yeah, the one I built on for, for myself was, um, was influenced by so many things and, and things that I've done, but also I wanted to learn more about, you know, ordinary house building. And so Kevin and I always joked that chicken coops are kind of a gateway building project. So uh, for me, that was the case. You know, we started with furniture, got into coops, and then tiny houses, you know, so. And your tiny house is eight, eight by 13? Eight by 13, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it has all the comforts of home, except uh, no bathroom. No bathroom, yeah, no bathroom. You have to use your neighbor's. Uh, yeah, yeah, I use my neighbor's bathroom. But all the other comforts of home? Yeah, it has a kitchen, hot water heater, gas stove, um, a little heater, um, and then all custom built-in furniture, yeah. And you mentioned this is the rage. We've heard of this, uh, especially in urban areas, the tiny houses in New York City all of a sudden. Uh, the, the small studio apartment that's well designed is is suddenly hot again. Yeah, yeah. I think it appeals to to people that um, want to kind of simplify their life a little bit. That that realize that they don't need so much stuff. They need a, a few things and a few really good things, um, and that you can you can really kind of by simplifying, focus on what you want, really want to focus on. And in your case, uh, very affordable, just a, a few thousand dollars to build your... Yeah, home. yeah, yeah. In my case, without the labor, <laughs> it was about $6,000, yeah. So uh, again, in the Bay Area where real estate prices are so inflated, um, I, that was went into my decision to start one is that I didn't know if I could be a homeowner there, so uh, I decided to build a tiny house, yeah. And another book on the way, or is this the one and only book from, from you guys on, on the chicken coop? Hopefully it's not one and only. Well, I hope we do another one, maybe a different topic, maybe, maybe a sequel to Reinventing the Chicken Coop. Um, we'll see. Matt yeah. Wolpe, thank you very much for taking the time to stop by and talk with us. Thank you.